I want to do an example to give you an idea of how to use the work energy principle. And so this is a pretty good one, I think. The idea is to take a mass, a ball, push it down on a spring, and then let it shoot up, and then say, well, how high does it go? And I pick some values here. Uh, it doesn't really matter. We'll, we'll, we'll use these at the end. Uh, it's 100 gram mass, so 0.1 kilograms. The spring constant is 15 newtons per, meter, newtons per meter. And then this compression distance is 1 centimeter or 0 0.01 meters. And I want to know how high it goes. So first off the bat, you know, if you try to use something like Newton's second law in one dimension, if you try to say, OK, F net y equals m a y, well, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have a problem primarily because the four, there's, there's two forces that act on the, the mass. There's the spring force pushing up and gravitational force pulling down. But the spring force is not constant, right? Uh, the force due to a spring is K times S, where S is the amount that's compressed. And as it gets uncompressed, the force changes. So you have a non-constant force here. And then after it leaves, you only have one force acting on it. You could do it after that. So it's, it's, it's not really a very good problem to do uh, forces and acceleration. Uh, and, and since we don't care about time anyway, we'd rather do work energy. So we have this is the work energy principle, which I set up there, work energy. OK. So I can write that as work as a change in energy. That's the work energy principle right there. So let's talk about the work energy principle. Uh, number one, what is work? So work, this is a way to deal with problems that only depend on position. So we define work, and this is the algebra-based version. So work is some force F magnitude times the displacement delta R times cosine of theta. So this is some the work done by some force F depends on the magnitude of that force, how far the force is applied, and the angle between F and theta, F and R, delta R. So you could write this as work equals F delta R cosine theta. You could also write this as work as the dot product, F dot delta R. All those are the same. But what about the change in energy? Well, this part, you actually need to do something before you talk about change in energy, and that's define your system. Because this says that the work done on a system is the change in energy, but what is a system? So in this case, uh, we need to pick what we're going to include in our system. So let's include the earth plus the ball plus the spring. And this is really useful because if I do that, then everything that I really want about to know about is in my system. Because what, what interactions do I have? Well, I have the spring pushing on the ball. Well, the spring force is part of my system, so I don't need to have work done by the spring. There's a gravitational force on the ball. Well, again, the earth and the gravitational interaction between the ball and the earth is part of my system, so I don't have work done by that. Uh, but that does mean I can have three types of energy. I can have kinetic energy, which is one half. That's a capital K. Don't confuse that with this K. That's a capital K. One half m v squared. I can have spring potential energy. Uh, U s is one half. This is the lowercase k s squared. So the energy stored in a spring depends on the spring constant and how much it's compressed. And then I have gravitational potential energy. Uh, U g is m g y where i never really defined where y is equal to zero and none of that matters because these are the types of energy but we deal with the change in energy so we don't care about potential energy we care about change in potential energy so if i say there's no work done because of my system i have the following zero and then i've changed in energy which is going to be the change in kinetic energy plus the change in spring potential energy plus the change in gravitational potential energy but change from where to where? We get to pick. Any two points I can pick, and this should work. So I can pick this as point one, this is point two, change in kinetic energy going from one to two, change in spring potential energy going from one to two, change in gravitational potential energy going from one to two. So writing that out, it would look like this. U is K2 minus K1 plus US2 minus US1 plus UG2 minus UG1. So now we do need to do, we need to pick something. We need to pick 
since we're going to be calculating gravitational potential, I need to say where is y equal to zero, and there is no wrong answer. Okay, it will work no matter where you pick the energy, the potential, the the position to be zero. I'm going to pick down here. So this point, so it's going to start at y equals zero. Now, let's imagine this. I want to find out how high it goes because this is going to become much simpler. How high does it go? Well, if I start right here and it shoots up, what do I know is true about the highest point? I don't know the height, right? But I do know the speed because if it's moving up and then moving down, it had to be at rest at some point. So at the highest point, V2 is zero. Also, what about the spring potential energy up here? Well, it's not even in contact with the spring. So there's no spring potential energy up here. So the spring potential energy at point two is zero also. Um, and then down here, what do I know about this position? Well, it's at y equals zero. So the, the gravitational potential energy is mg times zero. And if I launch it from rest, the velocity is zero. So this is really simple because look, k2 is zero because the velocity is zero up there. k1 is zero because the velocity right here is zero. us2, the spring potential ener energy up here, zero. us, that's a one. One is not zero. ug2, the potential energy up here, not zero. ug1, the potential energy down here, is zero because I picked y equals zero. I have a pretty easy, easy equation right now. So let's write this out. So I have zero equals negative us1, which is one half k s squared, right? It's compressed in amount s, and then plus m g h. So h is how high it is. G, of course, is the gravitational field, 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Now I just want to solve for h. Well, let's add this to both sides. I get one half k s squared equals m g h. Now I want to solve for h. I'm going to divide both sides by m g, and I'm going to swap it around. h is going to be k s squared over 2 m g. That's how high it's going to go. I don't know the answer because I just kind of picked some numbers, but let's put in my values. I had k is 15. I'm going to leave off the units. s was 0 0.01 squared, and then I'm going to divide by 2 times the mass of 0 0.1 and g was 9.8. So let's see how high this thing goes on clear. Can you see that? Put it right, right there, okay. So I'm gonna have 15 times 0 0.01 squared divided by parentheses, two times 0 0.1 times 9.8, close parentheses equals, and I get, no way. It doesn't go up high at all. I guess I picked some poor numbers. Let's see. Let me just recalculate that. 15 times 0 0.01 squared. Yeah, I guess that would be pretty small. Hmm. Divided by 2 times 0 0.1 times 9.8. Okay, let's fix this. So let's say I compress it. Uh, even if I change this, um, let's change the mass to, to 10 and so M is 10 kilogram, 10 grams, so uh, let's put 10 grams. Let's put the spring constant K at uh, 40, and let's say S is 0, 0.0, let's say 0 0.1, so 10 centimeters. So if I do that, I get uh, 40 times 0.1 squared divided by two, times 0 0.01 times 9.8, and it goes two centimeters, no, two meters. So now h equals two meters, so that's gonna go much higher. Okay, um, just one other thing, if you wanted to, it's possible to go right here and calculate the launch speed. Uh, if you do that, you could call this V3, and I can do the work energy principle going from 1 to 3. And so in this case, I would know the height, right? The height is going to be S, but I don't know the velocity. So you could solve for that. But that's an uh, example of how to find, how to use the work energy principle. Um, hopefully that helps.